I'm Rob Strand. I'm a Wisconsin DNR forester stationed in Menominee and covering Dunn County. And uh, a larger portion of my work every year deals with invasive species. So I'm here to lend a hand and, and uh, share a little bit of what I know. So why should we be concerned with invasive species? What's happening is we have invasive plants and animals and uh, that, that are introduced to the landscape by one means or another and they are uh, tend to be very aggressive in, in how they grow and how they reproduce and they are taking over niches in our little ecosystems that were once occupied by native stuff and once that uh, process reaches critical mass pretty soon you have a natural community of sorts that's more dominated by invasive non-native stuff than the native stuff and um, and once you have the apple cart upset like that so to speak um, there's kind of a ripple effect and, and you start losing diversity in terms of the diversity of plants and animals and and uh, other uh, functions of the landscape and it, everything tends to become homogenized and we see water quality implications from that where we are able to we like to try to at least keep some of this uh, invasion of the exotics in check. We, we understand that they're a part of life and they're always going to be here because they've gotten such a foothold. But if we can pick some areas to at least keep them at bay and keep some areas of our native landscape going, especially around our urban areas, it just improves the quality of life for all of us. And as an example, right over here, We've got European honeysuckle with the red berries, which is an invasive from Europe. Um, and we've got buckthorn, which is another one from Europe, mingled in with it. And uh, around all of these things, here we have a native black cherry tree. And we've got um, some blackberry brush and a lot of native stuff, what I call good guys mixed in but right now the, the invasives are winning the battle here and so our goal is to set these invasives back and try to give our native stuff a little window of opportunity to reestablish itself and, and keep it present on the site here. Where would someone start if they didn't have a lot of experience? The best starting place is to contact your local DNR office particularly the wildlife or forestry or endangered resources people that might be stationed there um, county land conservation offices are also a good resource and, and there's a land conservation department in most if not all of the counties in the state. Uh, county zoning offices also deal uh, to one degree or another with invasive species issues uh, especially in, in land that they uh, are involved with in riparian areas and, and uh, wetlands and things like that. Are there any legal issues that a school district would need to be contacted about with this type of project? You know, get started and talk to your administration and talk to the people who can help you out and, and make sure you got all your bases covered before you take the kids out. How much lead time should I give to actually set this whole project up, making those contacts, getting all my equipment ready, and then how much time should I dedicate in the classroom to actually doing the activities? It depends on how big of a project you want to do. Um, this kit is put together, this whole program is put together, so people can use little chunks of it if they want to. You don't have to go through the whole thing. Um, if you're just interested in teaching students maybe how to use GPS, we have GPS units that are inside the kit and that could definitely be used um, you know, just uh, in that set. But you could also you know, get very involved and do a very large project. So I think if you were going to go all out and have a whole project, I would agree with you and say that probably a year's time, make your contacts first. I think that that's really important. Uh, get it okayed with administration, find your site, and then go forward from there with some of the lessons that are in the kit to get the students involved and in understanding how to look for the plants and then going out and actually uh, taking the plants out of the area. And I would also like to add that if somebody else in the community is doing a project like this, you might be able to piggyback with them and be able to do some smaller things with them and just get the students involved in a small scale just so that they feel that they've been participating rather than putting it all together from beginning to mm -hmm. end. So check with your community and see if maybe they're doing something and you can help out. What type of tools or supplies do you need to start a restoration project like this? 
So some means of doing some kind of inventory of uh, what invasive stuff are we dealing with and how much of it is out there. That's kind of your first tool, your first process. And from there you can figure out, okay, can we hand pull these things and have just student power doing the, doing the work? Um, or are we going to be actually cutting things? If we're cutting, do we need to be spraying herbicide to prevent the resprouting? Um, and when you get into that, then you're getting into hand tools, uh, saws and uh, backpack sprayers. Um, you need to have somebody qualified to come out and do the spraying work. We can't, can't uh, generally have our uh, students out applying chemicals. For the real dirty work or the getting the fingernails dirty type work, uh, basic hand tools and protection equipment is, is pretty much all you need.